a square root analog circuit is shown here in which the computed V out is proportional to the square root of V in as applied here at the input of the circuit. How is this possible? Okay, so to do the quick analysis, let's make the assumption that input voltage is a positive voltage so that we can take the square root. And also let's make the assumption that the four BJ2 of bipolar junction transistors you can see in this circuit, they are all similar on the same substrate, very close to each other, copy paste of each other with the same junction properties and assume that the current gain or beta of the transistors is uh, large, much larger than one. Okay, so with those assumptions, uh, let's make the also assumption that naturally op amps uh, voltages, supply voltages are properly applied and op amps are properly biased so that they are operating in linear region as a result. They are not, a, they are not saturated and I can make the assumption that mutual short is valid for all op amps which means that the voltage at positive input terminal is equal to the voltage at negative input terminal for each op amp. Okay, with that said, uh, let me change the color so that you can see what I'm writing on the figure. So look at here, we have a virtual ground, zero volt. From there, from that zero volt, we have a positive negative VBE1 for transistor T1. Then we get to the emitter of transistor T1, which is connected to the base of transistor T2. Okay, so from there, we have another plus minus VBE2 that from the emitter or base uh, of uh, the transistor 1 and 2 to the common node E here at the bottom. Um, and then, so basically from the, from the ground, the common node is just a cascade of, cascade of two VBE in series. Also, similar situation here on the right side, we have mutual ground or zero. From there, we have plus minus VBE3 for base emitter, voltage of base emitter of transistor T3. And then in series, we have another plus minus VBE4, which is the voltage of base emitter of transistor 4. And again, these two base emitter voltages are in series cascade from 0 to common node E. Because of this observation, I can say, uh, let me change the color. I can say voltage of base emitter for transistor 1 plus voltage of base emitter for transistor 2 on the left side is equal to the voltage of base emitter for transistor 3 plus the voltage of base emitter for transistor 4. Okay, so that's what we talked about. Now I'm going to substitute this base emitter voltage using the well-known well base emitter voltage of BJ2 or bipolar junction transistor uh, as a function of its current. We know that VBE is equal to eta VT in which eta is the ideality factor. It's a number between 1 and 2 for bipolar junction transistor closer to 2, and Vt is the thermal voltage, uh, Vt here, is the thermal voltage, and that is just a Kt over Q, or K is the Boltzmann constant, as a reference, I have it here, and T is the uh, junction temperature of the BJT on substrate, that is in Kelvin, and the Q is the electron charge that is also referred to and mentioned here for the reference. We don't need to deal with these, um, so eta Vt will disappear. I'm going to show you, but I just mentioned that for the reference. Then we have natural logarithm, the collector current of transistor, so let's put it here. So I collector, and then we have the saturation current of the transistor. Again, since we are making the assumption that all transistors, uh, all four tra BJT transistors are similar, uh, sharing the same substrate properties, IS is practically assumed to be the same for all of them, and they are having the same temperature. Okay, so I'm going to substitute you, in, from equation 1, in equation 1, I'm going to use equation 2 to substitute for voltage of base emitter for VBE1, VBE2, VBE3, VBE4. So let's do that. And if I do that, you can see that eta VT eta Vt will disappear from both sides of this equation, this equality, because it is common for all transistors since we make the assumption that transistors are similar. So I'm not going to even write it. I'm going to just write for VBE1, just natural logarithm, IC1, the collector current of transistor 1 related to VBE1, divided by IS, plus ln, for VBE2, IC2, divided by IS, again, all transistors uh, similar the same, so IS is the same for all of them. For VBE3, ln IC3 divided by IS. And finally, for VBE4, ln IC4 
uh, divide by i s. Okay, so let me also shift this whole thing a little bit this side so that uh, it's viewable. There you go. Okay, so what is the next move? Well, uh, now the only thing I need to do is I need to substrate for IC1, IC2, IC1, IC2, IC3, and IC4. But one last thing before that. Uh, I have the sum of two ln, and I, we are making the assumption that the currents are positive because V in is a positive number. Uh, and the uh, rest of voltages are positive. So, uh, therefore, I, I, when I'm summing up ln, I can just uh, algebraically rewrite it in the form of ln, natural logarithm, uh, 1 ln, but then multiply the components inside, terms inside. So, I have IC1 times IC2 divided by IS squared. And on the other side, the same thing, on the other side of the equation. I can write natural logarithm of of ln, so the natural logarithm of IC3, IC4, C is collector current, and then divide by saturation current squared. Okay, we have two natural, two things, uh, natural logarithm of two things that are positive equal, so I, I just make, uh, because of the properties of uh, logarithm, then uh, function, then we can say that effectively the terms inside are equal. Logarithm is a <coughs> Uh, is a one-to-one -one function. So we have IC1, uh, let me see if I have enough space. Yes, I do. So then as a result, I'm going to say, okay, let me put it here. So IC1 equal to IC1, IC2 uh, is equal to uh, IC3, IC4. This is equation 4, or, or 3. So in this equation 3, I just need to substitute for these IC uh, that, I see, that I'm seeing here. All right, take a look at IC1. The collector current for uh, transistor 1, maybe I use a different color so that you again see it on figure easier. So I'm going to use, uh, let's say, here. So I have IC1, and that IC1 current is nicely going through this route, IC1. So nothing can come or go through the input terminal of ideal op amp that is in linear region because it, it practically it has infinite impedance. So that's why IC1 just flows through resistor R from V in and goes through transistor T1. Also, because of virtual short that we just talked about it, uh, the positive and negative terminal should have the same voltage for uh, linearly operating op amp. And since the positive terminal is virtual grounded, zero, therefore negative terminal is also zero volt. So as a result, I can find IC1 nicely because on one side of resistor R, we have Vn. On the other side, we have zero. So therefore, I can say, therefore, I can say IC1. Let me go back to the, to the original color. Okay, so therefore, I can say IC1 is equal to simply V in minus zero divide by R just V in over R. So let's name this, uh, let's keep this as, I'm going to write uh, four equations. And IC2, uh, look at the, uh, the collector current going through the, again, different color if I may. So, so collector current here, same color. It's going to be too much color. Okay, so uh, collector current here is IC2, and again, for the same reason, nothing can come or go through the input terminal. So whatever current is flowing is coming from 4 volt as a reference voltage through the potentiometer MR. Uh, and M is, let's say you can make the assumption that M for the potentiometer is between 0 and 1. So it's, that's why I'm saying it's MR. Uh, it's, basically, it's a ratio. So then that current is going through uh, that resistor, that potential meter from 4 volt and directly to the collector of uh, transistor T2. So I can write IC2 is equal to just 4 volt minus 0 divided by MR. Okay, and uh, also for, let's say, IC3, I can write the same thing. IC3 for transistor T3 on the right side, you can see that this op-amp here 
is operating in linear region, so virtual short forces that the positive and negative terminal should have the same voltage. Positive terminal is AC, is virtually grounded, so it's going to be zero, therefore zero volt here for negative. And that helps me to find the current through the resistor R, uh, and uh, that is easily just V out on one side of resistor R and zero volt on the other side. So this IC3, uh, that is the current flowing through R and going through the collector of transistor T3, is just uh, V out minus zero divided by R. And lastly, for IC4, I can say IC4, which is the current of uh, collector, uh, current going through the collector of transistor T4, well, nothing come or go to the, to the uh, input terminal of ideal op-amp because it has practically infinite, infinite impedance. And because of virtual short, we know that voltage of positive and negative is the same. Positive, again, virtually uh, grounded, so negative is also zero volt. As a result, this node is zero volt. So the voltages across NR potentiometer here, again, N is a ratio that we can make the assumption is N between zero and one for the potentiometer, adjustable variable resistor. Uh, so we can find the current uh, that is going to collector of transistor IC, uh, T4 or IC4, which is effectively the whole current that is coming down through NR and then going through the transistor. So IC4 is just V out minus zero, um, the, the two voltages around uh, across the NR, and then divide by NR. So um, now that I have the, all the formulas for the IC1, IC2, IC3, I'm going to substitute them into equation three. And as a result, I have Vn divided by R times, that's for IC1. For IC2, I have 4 divided by MR equal to, on the other side, IC3 is V out divided by R. And for IC4, we have the, uh, the current of collector for transistor T4 is V out divided by NR. Okay, uh, the nice thing is this R values will cancel out from uh, all side, and as a result, what I get is V out squared on this side is equal to, um, and then we have an N, let's not forget that, so I'm going to put N to the other side, so that N, and of course I have 4, so 4 N over M, and then we have Vn. And the last step is we are done because effectively this is exactly what we wanted because it translate to because it translates to if I take a square root, it translates to exactly what I wanted. V out is equal to two n over m to the power 0 0.5, which is a square root of n over m, and then most importantly, square root of V in. That is exactly the final formula that I wanted to confirm. This circuit is effectively a square rooter analog circuit. It's an active analog circuit implemented using four ideal op amps and the four bipolar junction transistors that is nicely implementing or calculating or computing uh, the square root of a positive voltage at the input of the circuit. Uh, the voltage at the output is proportional to a square root of the voltage at input. I hope that this is helpful.